That brings us to number 12 on our action agenda. Action is necessary or appropriate on matters discussed in executive session. Do I have any motions? Mr. Hogan. <clears throat> I've got a few of them. Okay. Uh, for starters, I'd like to make a motion the board approve uh, A, selected employment items, Exhibit A. So I have a second. Uh, Mr. Satterfield, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries seven to zero. Okay. I've got one for C as well. Uh, I'll make the motion that the board approves uh, awarding CPL Architects, Engineers, Landscaping Architects, and Surveyors PC as the architect ar architectural and engineering firm for the closeout of Chapin High School Stadium. Do I have a second? Ms. Barnhart, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries seven to zero. Do you have another motion? I do. Let's see, D. Uh, let me get to it. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the board approves awarding Goodwin Mills Canal, uh, Cap, Cowood, LLC, the contract for services of architecturing and engineering for new classroom wing additions to Lake Murray Elementary and Chapin Elementary. Do I have a second? Mr. Satterfield, any discussion? Did you get all that down, Amy? <laughs> I'll call for the vote, all in favor? That motion carries a seven to zero. <clears throat> any more motions? Let's do. Okay. Let's see. E. Make a motion that the board approve the contract of sale to be removed forward with contingent technical evaluation for purchase of property. How specific do I need to get? We're looking to uh, for exhibit E. For exhibit E. Uh, Mr. Scully seconds. And any discussion? All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries seven to zero. And was that it, Mr. Hogan? I believe, I believe so. so, yes. All right. All right, that moves us to number 13, the second and final reading approval of proposed revisions to board policy KEC library media center material selection and reconsideration process as seen in exhibit G. Do I have a motion? And then Mr. Hogan? Make a motion to board approve second and final reading of proposed revisions to board policy KEC, library, media center, materials, selection, and reconsideration process shown in exhibit G. Do I have a second? Mr. Satterfield? All right. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Ms. McCaskill's here for questions. Ms. Huddle? Um, I have a question about um, just the and I'm asking it now because the R policy is not on here. Um, it's on the information agenda. But the way I understand our policy, and this may be a question for you, for you Ms. Hines. Um, the way I understand our policy, it, it, um, our policy on policies, um, you, it says the board may approve our policies. Um, so I guess I'm asking because the R policy is listed for this is on the information agenda. That means we're not going to approve the R policy. So I asked. Um, that we, we talked about that in our board officer meetings, Dr. Ross. So yes, when when we were setting the rule for this, if you when we were going through the discussions, uh, we were making edits in discussion to our policies. Once it went for approval then if it's approved, it goes down as the information for that, for that item. So I think what Ms. Huddle is saying is, d should the board approve the R policy? Because pol the R policy is vague on whether or not we approve the R policy or it's just automatically adopted upon the adoption of this policy? Well, technically, and that's kind of what, you know, the rules or what the administration, right? Like, it does say may. What we do is during discussion, if there are any edits, that's when we change it. 
once you approve the master policy, then it approves the, the R policy. And I guess I'm really asking for going forward because I know in the past we have approved some R policy changes. And I had heard that there was basically two criteria, but it's not in the policy, and that the two criteria were either if the board originally approved the R policy, then any changes would be approved by the board, or if the R policy contained um, legal or technical things that um, really should be approved by the board. And so the reason I'm bringing it up is because this all stems from a regulation, and key parts of the regulation are in the R policy. So I guess that's why I'm asking if and, and, I, and I would say this, I mean, you could, I mean, the board could always pull it out for approval, but a lot of the things that we write as rule are always based on regs. So we will, uh, whether it's hiring practices or leave policies or uh, instructional, they're, they're always uh, are gonna be written on, on regs. What we wanted to do is not uh, to give the board during discussion opportunity to, to change or rearrange or make recommendations to us, but once it went for final approval uh, of the of the uh, mother policy, then the R policy would be adopted under the rule. Okay, I mean, I'm, again, I'm, it makes sense now. I'm just right, right. there are things in here. There might be times yeah. that could. I'm just concerned that, like we talked about the 90 days, if we don't um, require board approval of the R policy, then that could get changed later without board approval, correct? Something like the 90 days. Well, the 90 days, would be, oh, I know, I see what you're saying, because that was something that the board set based off of what they could set, based off of our parameters of the regulation. It, I mean, the, the district administration could have set us a different day. We could have taken longer, yeah, and we decided like, to they, do we the 90 days. We could have done days. it for 120 days. Instead, we did 90 days, that kind of thing. I think that that could, I think that could happen regardless. Well, no, you're saying that the administration could change it. Yeah, and I'm not assuming anything nefarious by any means. I just, it, 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 there's so much of the policy that's in the R that I just wonder in, if it shouldn't be approved by the board or any changes approved by the board if they're made in the future. And I would say this, we would have to notice any change anyway. Uh, we typically either through superintendent's report or information item notice those changes. And if the officers wanted to pull that into action, we could certainly do that. But we will always notice any change. Any other, any other questions for Ms. McCaskill regarding this motion? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries seven to zero. And that brings us to number 14, which is the second and final reading approval of the new board policy IJL. Do I have a motion, Mr. Hogan? <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion that the board approve first reading approval of proposed revisions to board policy IJK, supplemental material selection and Hold adoption. Oh, excuse me, I read 15. Scratch that, I'd like to make a motion the board approve second final reading approval of new board policy IJL, library and instructional material selection and adoption, shown in exhibit H. Do I have a second? Mr. Satterfield, any discussion? <clears throat> any questions for Ms. McCaskill? All right, seeing none, I call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries a seven to zero. And then, Mr. Hogan, do you have? Unless somebody else wants to. I'll do it. Just, Go ahead. Ahead. Barnhart. Just to Barnhart. switch things up a little yeah. bit, I'd Ms. like Barnhart. to uh, move that we approve the first reading of the proposed revisions to board policy IJK, supplementary materials selection and adoption. A second, Ms. Snipes. <laughs> All right, this is the first reading. Uh, Ms. McCaskill or any questions from the board? I, I don't see any questions, so I'm gonna call it for Ms. Huddle. I don't have a question, but um, this is another one where, I mean, like 90% of it's in the R. That's right. I, I know, we are. I just, <laughs> so we're going to discuss the R. So, Okay, so we're gonna discuss the R again next time when we have second reading as well. So this. Okay. 
I was, I think we were going to say the same thing. Okay. <laughs> so what we're, because it's the rule up for the discussion today, you approve, you advance the, uh, the mother policy to first. We follow you with a rule. Okay. So we're always going to follow the board and not proceed before the board. So we're going to move it to discussion to discuss our proposal for the rule. And then if there's feedback that our rule is not in line with what you advanced first reading, then we would make those edits. It could come back um, at second reading for another discussion if the board so wanted to, or if the board says you know they want it in, in action, you could do it as well under the MAPO, under that provision there. Okay. All right. Miss Huddle? <laughs> okay, so um, we talked about maybe having a definition of controversial. It's in the R. Okay, gotcha. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to call for the vote on this one. All in favor? All opposed? All right, that motion carries seven to zero. Very hesitantly. <laughs> I'll be back soon. <laughs> uh, all right, that brings us to number 16 on the agenda. Um, do I have a motion? Ms. Barnhart? Oh, no. I'd like to move that we approve the first reading of provo proposed revisions to board policy JICJ cell phones and communication devices and network access exhibit J. Do I have a second? Mr. Hogan? All right. And for discussion, Dr. Harris, board, any questions? Ms. Huddle? Okay. I still have a question about um, so uh, in the progressive discipline so it says an under ILD if a student violates the preceding rules on the school day the student will be subject to prog progressive consequences in the student code of handbook um, refusal to obey so if you would just walk us through, because I think parents need to know this. If a student has not had any issues all year long and they break this policy, what, what's, what happens with refusal to obey? Well, it, it obviously ranges from a, a conference to communication with parents to uh, ultimately ending to um, uh, some kind of detentions at the school as well. So it has a long range. Uh, ultimately, the, again, depending upon the, the choice and decision that a student might make and his or her being, uh, what I'm going to say, adamant about not uh, turning over their phone or silencing and putting away their phone, that could, in fact, result in some kind of suspension as well. Uh, but it's going to start at the lowest level, and I feel very confident as our schools are already implementing this in, in, in parts. Um, uh, working with our students and we've not had any levels or any concerns risen that have arisen r risen to the district office level at this point uh, that I'm aware of so uh, I feel confident that they will continue to keep it at the grassroots level at the lowest level possible and that um, our students will continue to, comp to comply with what's uh, already before them let me rephrase the question so um, a student doesn't turn their phone off and it starts ringing in the classroom, the teacher says, Johnny, turn your phone off. Mm -hmm. That's it. But at some point, the teacher or another teacher could get frustrated enough that they send Johnny up to the, uh, the principal's office, right? It certainly could. Then, okay. Then at that point is what you're saying, there's a conference with the parents? We certainly think that we believe that the conferences could, could take place at the school or in the classroom, but ultimately, if it is referred to the administrator, then yes, those conferences and or the consequences. Again, it depends on that behavior of that student. You know, um, it could be a refusal at the, at the, in the classroom, but a compliance at, with the administrator. On either level, what level two and level, level I'm sorry, level one and level two, there is a consequence for, for, re, for refusal to obey in the classroom as well as with the administrator. 
So it, it, again, it depends on where that student is in terms of what that student does and how they respond to the request to silence and or store away their phones. Okay, how about um, a student takes a video and puts it on social media? So they're not in the classroom, the teacher, um, how does that work? If it's during the school day, which this particular policy advises that it that this has um, been governed by the student, then that student will be subject to uh, the discipline in the, con in the student code of conduct, which simply means that it could very well lead to a suspension and or additional consequences. Again, uh, depending on the degree okay. and the severity of what has occurred. I mean, I'm gonna be real frank. I'm just very worried that there's a lot of depending in May and all, and that, you know, Parents want fairness. They want their child treated the same as every other child for the same thing. And I'm just kind of maybe we wait and see what happens. But um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just concerned that we're going to hear from parents that feel like their child didn't get treated fairly um, because it's not very well laid out. Um, and I'm curious, Mr. Satterfield, with your experience, I was going to ask you. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, and Mr. Harris and I used to work together on yep. discipline issues. Typically what happens is if uh, all the, he was talking about level one, two, three, four, if it's a lower level offense, and if I ask you, for, I say, Ms. Hutto, would you please turn your phone off? And you say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was on. It's one and done. If I ask you to turn your phone off, and you say, well, I'm not gonna do it. Now it's an elevated situation. But every assistant principal or principal that deals with that does that based on the, each situation. That's why there's not just one. It could be a, um, a conference. It could be a Saturday detention. It could be an after-school detention. There are a myriad of things that they choose, but they use very good judgment in dealing with the students. And if the students are respectful and follow the rules, there are going to be students who forget to turn their phones off. That's just the, and you got all those kids, and they all got phones. Um, but uh, if it was a, if it's a repetitive thing, then now I'd say, well, I've already had a conference with you, and now this is your second offense. Still the same category, but now I might give you an hour after school detention because I've, we've already been through this before. And if it's a third offense, now I might give you a Saturday detention. So um, at some point in time, you want to change you want to change the behavior, but you don't want to be too punitive for the kids. And one of the things that I think that we're going to wrestle with as a, di I'm, not, I'm not, but Mr. Harris and the staff is going to wrestle with as a district is, this has become the norm for kids. It really has. And so there are going to have to be some reminders and there's going to have to be some understanding that it has become the norm. But I will tell you, I was uh, reading in one of the little uh, information things that we got, one, the one school district that has already implemented this, they are ecstatic. They said kids are concentrating in class. They're more attentive in class. They're listening to instruction a lot more, a lot more and they're not so distracted, so to speak. But um, um, the principals and the assistant principals and those that deal with this kind of thing, they're very, they, they use the most positive judgment. That's been my experience in dealing with it, so. And Ms. Reinhardt. Just to follow up on that, and like Mr. Satterfield said, I mean, we do live in a day and age where every, all the kids are used to having these devices, and it is, I just do hope that we have just a, a very large grace period kind of transferring them away from having them in the classrooms and some grace on kind of the, because, I mean, suspension, it's obviously have to get, go by the handbook, but um, just for a little while until these kids kind of get used to, to this new norm, um, mm -hmm. I think that'll be good for them as well, so thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Mr. Hogan. But all in all, I mean, <clears throat> ultimately after January 1st, if a student shows up to school and his cell phone silenced, its notifications are turned off, it's in its book bag, it's out of the way, there's no issue, correct? It's not an issue. Got it. And a lot of it seems like the, the issues come up around respect. They're, I mean, students need to be respectful. They're, that They're expected to be respectful anyways. So I think the suspensions or like the serious consequences come with just blatant insubordination and disrespect to, you know, the adults in the room. And um, 
Yeah, I, I agree. It, as, as we've said, it, it, it really depends on the behavior and the response the right. student has toward the, the teacher and or administrator. Right. Uh, that's going to vary. And I think Steph was absolutely right. The overwhelming majority of the students are going to, I think, I feel certain going to comply. Uh, right. They may have some reminders, obviously. They're certainly going to take advantage of uh, uh, gradually moving this into making certain that they understand and are clear and that they can uh, learn to embrace what this policy says. But I think overwhelmingly they're going to comply and do what's necessary. There may be one or two hiccups, mm -hmm. um, but that's we address that accordingly and appropriately. Okay. Any other comments before Mr. Scully? Yeah, I'm just going to make a quick comment. Would that treating people fairly have been at the forefront of our minds all throughout history? So if this policy brings that, then I welcome it. Okay. Any other? All right. Well, there is a motion on the floor. I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? That motion carries 7 to 0. Thank you very much, Dr. Harris. Thank you. Appreciate you. And that brings us to 17. Approval of fund balance assignment recommendations. Do I have a motion, Mr. Hogan? I'd like to make a motion the board approve the reallocation of 1.5 million fund balance assignment for the purchase of portable classrooms and approve the 1.5 to be assigned as follows. 500,000 for additional security needs and 1 million for replacing band and orchestra equipment as outlined below in exhibit K. Do I have a second? Mr. Satterfield seconds. All right, Ms. Tucker and board, any questions, comments? Any comments going once? All right, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Or did you have a comment? Uh, just clarity. Yeah, oh, just, yes. I mean, wanted to make sure. I mean, obviously, the, the million dollars in band instruments and the, the half million dollar for security, these will go through bid processes. And so it's probably going to be a little bit of time before this money is Correct. essentially spent. Okay. Correct. All right, anybody else? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? That motion carries seven to zero. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Tucker.